You're watching Telecom TV Spotlight on 5G series. It's Monday, the 28th of February, and this is The Slice. Headlines today. MWC returns to Barcelona, but is overshadowed once again by global events. Orange selects suppliers for its 5G standalone networks in Europe, and Nokia commercially deploys 5G edge slicing with Cellcom and Telia. Hello, I'm Guy Daniels, Director of Content for Telecom TV, and welcome to our first live program of the week, covering today's news from MWC and beyond. We're broadcasting live at 1 p.m. Central European time, Monday through Thursday, for the whole duration of MWC 22. I'll be bringing you the latest industry news, while my colleagues Rayla Maitre and Yenitsa Boyadzieva report from the event itself in Barcelona. So let's now go and hear from Ray and Yanni with the first of their many reports this week. Thanks, Guy. Yes, here we are in Barcelona at MWC 22. And as you can see, attendees are arriving for day one of the show. This is likely to be one of the busiest days of the week. Yeah, that's right. Monday and Tuesday look like they're going to get the most show floor action and also provide some guidance as to what the key topics of discussion are going to be here this week in the industry. So let's find out what the main news stories are today. So Orange has used day one at MWC 22 to announce its 5G core standalone vendors. And the news will come as a bit of a blow to those who are hoping to see some competitive names showcased by one of Europe's tier one operators. It has selected Ericsson's 5G standalone core for Belgium, Spain, Luxembourg and Poland, and Nokia's 5G standalone core for France and Slovakia. Orange has also chosen Nokia's subscriber data management system for all of those markets. And also for all of those markets, it's chosen Oracle's 5G core signaling and routing system. So the news will be a bit of a disappointment for some of the other alternative 5G standalone core vendors, especially the hopefuls that would have been hoping to get in on the act because Orange in the summer of 2021 announced a uh, like a, a testing uh, an experimental 5g core network in lanyon france where it named uh, casa systems and hpe as two of the companies active in the 5g standalone core there so there's still plenty of time for other vendors of course to be chosen and brought into the fold but right now ericsson nokia and oracle have the bragging rights yanni what are we hearing from you Turk Telecom has tapped Red Hat's cloud-native OpenShift platform to migrate 30 applications from traditional telco IT systems to a cloud environment. With the move, the Turkish operator aims to accelerate its digital transformation so it can meet customer demands more quickly and alleviate disruption caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. Benefits touted by Red Hat include cutting time to market from days to seconds, improved application performance and adoption of the operator's training and support. The move is important as many telcos around the world aim to adopt cloud-oriented day-to-day processes in order to improve their efficiencies and to become smarter and more agile companies. Without such moves, telcos will suffer from having cumbersome and outdated business practices. And Yanni, we've got news also of one of the biggest names in the mobile sector, I think. That's right. Tariq Amin is a busy guy, already the CEO of Rakuten Symphony, the open run technology vendor offshoot of Rakuten Mobile. He has now also been named as the incoming CEO of Rakuten Mobile itself, in an effort to accelerate the growth of the Japanese mobile operator. He will replace Yoshihisa Yamada from 30th of March. That's going to make Amin, who was previously a Rakuten Mobile CTO, an even more desirable contact on the show floor in Barcelona during MWC 2022. Rakuten Mobile, which currently has more than 5 million customers, but which is still reporting major operating losses, made the announcement late Friday in a new management structure announcement that was lacking in commentary or explanation and some technical news from Nokia Ray. 
Yes, that's right, Yanni. Uh, Nokia is claiming the world's first deployments of 5G edge slicing on commercial mobile networks with developments at two operators, Scandinavian giant Telia and Israel's Cellcom. Uh, the vendor's edge slicing solution promises capabilities for which operators the world over are desperate. That is the capability for CSPs to offer their enterprise customers secure network slices, essentially cellular virtual private networks over both 4G and 5G networks, thus creating new revenue generating opportunities and an enhanced opportunity to team up with cloud-based application specialists. In Tampere, Finland, Telia is working with Nokia to trial a service with engineering firm Sandvik to see how 5G slicing can interact with various digital, digital applications and mining equipment. While in Israel, the trial with Cellcom is focused on more generic business applications and enterprise interconnectivity. And Yanni, uh, pressing and distressing international news is also impacting the show here in Barcelona, isn't it? The organizer of MWC, the GSMA, reacted to the conflict between Russia and Ukraine by barring a handful of Russian companies from the show, Reuters reported. On its website, the GSMA said that the event in Barcelona will also lack a Russian pavilion. It also expressed a strong condemnation of quoting the Russian invasion of Ukraine. While the Industry Association described MWC as immaterial given the current circumstances, it noted that the Congress itself is a unifying event aiming to convene the mobile ecosystem and push connectivity to help people, industry and society thrive. The GSMA also provided assurance that security for the event is under constant review and adjustments. Yeah, that's right, Yanni. I mean, we might be in a bit of a cocoon here in Barcelona, MWC 22, but international affairs are always impacting what goes on at such a major show as this. So that's the main news from the show floor, day one, at MWC 22. Guy, back over to you in the studio. Thanks, Ray and Yanni, who were reporting there from the show floor of MWC 22 in Barcelona this morning with the latest industry developments. They'll both be busy for the rest of the day, as I know they have some great interviews with CSPs lined up and will feature highlights from those in tomorrow's show. A reminder that we'll be adding new videos to the Telecom TV website all week, which you can watch in their entirety on demand. We already have a curated playlist of content available for you today, and I'll give you more details on that later. But first, presenting at the Huawei Day Zero event on Sunday, albeit via remote video link, China Mobile gave us an update on the progress of its cloud-based core network and virtualization targets. We always push hard for centralized and cloud-based deployment. We have already built the world's largest cloud core networks. Currently, our SA core networks have over 100,000 servers and can serve 350 million users. Our goal is to further achieve 100% virtualization of core network functions and capacity by 2025. And opening the conference program at MWC 22 this morning was GSMA Director General Mats Gromrid, who stated that by the end of this year, there will be 1 billion 5G connections globally. Of course, this being the Mobile Operators Association, there is never enough spectrum. To help support this accelerated growth, uh, today, the GSMA, we have launched a hub of 5G transformation case studies, including 5G drones, 5G construction, and 5G wind farms. Now, this is a frontier area of growth with lots of opportunities. And so I want to use today to call on governments for their timely release and assignment of spectrum at affordable prices. So far, almost 80% of 5G launches have been carried out in the mid-band spectrum, which is vital for citywide coverage. But it will be the millimeter wave spectrum that provides the fastest data speeds in densely populated areas, like campuses, like industrial parks and sports arenas. VMware is making a number of announcements at MWC with updates on CSP partnerships and contracts. 
including a CNF deal with Millicom and the provision of a cloud platform to Safaricom. Safaricom has picked our telco cloud platform to provide a greenfield network in Ethiopia. So this is, you know, from scratch, they're deploying us to provide a greenfield network. That's Millicom, which is also under the brand name Tigo, provides cable and mobile services, as you know, in Latin America, manages a, a pretty complex mobile network um, that spans nine countries, three business units, and we are working with Tigo to, uh, to deploy, to uni unify these siloed networks and begin the transition to the virtualized and containers network environment. And Intel has announced a new Xeon processor dedicated to the network and edge, as well as 5G specific enhancements for the Xeon processor that will support VRAN applications. We're launching the next generation Intel Xeon D processor, the first Intel SoC designed from the ground up for the software defined network and edge. This SoC is packed with network and edge specific capabilities, including integrated AI acceleration, integrated crypto acceleration, integrated ethernet, support for time coordinated computing and time sensitive networking, as well as industrial class reliability. We are announcing for the very first time unique 5G specific signal processing instruction enhancements on Xeon course that have been built from the ground up to support RAN specific signal processing. These capabilities deliver up to a 2x capacity gain for VRAN to continue delivering gen over gen performance gains for our customers and supports advanced capabilities such as high cell density for 64T64R massive MIMO in the most demanding RAN environments in the world. Now, the invasion of Ukraine has cast a shadow over what should have been a joyous reunion for the telecoms industry in Barcelona. And no amount of celebration can displace the tragic events unfolding as we speak. Now, as we heard from Yanni just a few minutes ago, the GSMA, which runs the event, published a statement saying it strongly condemns the Russian invasion of Ukraine. MWC seems immaterial under the circumstances. And it added there will be no Russian pavilion at MWC 22. And I think that's very important to reiterate, as, as I said, Yanni spoke about this earlier. The GSMA also said that uh, MWC promotes a unifying event. It does indeed. It promotes the connectivity that it can ensure people, industry and society can thrive. And this is a kind of statement that we should all thoroughly endorse because it's exactly what we and all our colleagues at Barcelona MWC will be attempting to do this week. Now, as you would expect from day one of Mobile World Congress, there have been rather a lot of news releases this morning and Twitter is in a meltdown mode as well. Too many to cover in full. So here is our pick of the rest of the news. Finland operator Elisa is partnering with Google Cloud. Elisa will pilot Google Cloud's Anthos as an on-prem cloud solution for hosting its cloud-native network functions using a cloud-native 5G core as the first trial application. It's all gone a little quiet from Ericsson and the expected Monday morning press conference has not materialized. On Sunday, media outlets reported on a leak of confidential internal documents that allegedly uncover allegations of corruption in several countries. And finally, the Telecom Infra project has published its Open RAN Release 2 roadmap that coordinates the prioritized requirements of operators with the product readiness of vendors, which it says provides a path to commercialization. As well as reporting on the news, we have a whole week of special Spotlight on 5G programs for you. You can watch them on demand or via the playlist on Telecom TV, which will be running Monday through Thursday. Strategy Outlook returns with focused discussions on the 5G core, RAN, edge and private networks and the cloud, along with interviews from CSP executives and vendors. Don't miss our Top 10 Mobile Moments series, where Ray and I look back at Telecom TV's 20 years of coverage of MWC. It's a fun trip down memory lane. We serve up a fresh edition of The Slice every day of MWC with all the important news and analysis from the Telecom TV team. And then the following week, when we're all back at our desks, 
it's time for the after show, our live Q&A program. So do start sending us your questions now. I mentioned earlier that we have a curated playlist of videos to watch. The playlist is running for most of the day on Telecom TV, but you can watch them on demand. You can find all the details on the Spotlight on 5G section of the website. Today's theme for our Strategy Outlook panel debate is the 5G core, but we have a range of 5G related interviews. Here's a sample of what we're covering Monday, featuring automation, analytics and public cloud. But we start with NTT Docomo's Open RAN ecosystem. To mitigate or solve the challenges uh, and accelerate the open run in the world, we create the open run ecosystem, OREC, as you mentioned, they're working with partners such as Red Hat. One of the things we are doing through this OREC was, is, is adding new partners to this capability, which is a first. Um, I mean, this is a customer instituted exercise, which is NTT Docomo. And there they brought a set of ecosystem partners together and they said, hey, we need to get this working because that's what we want to be able to accomplish or deploy in our infrastructure in the future. So let's go test it. Let's go identify the issues and challenges. HP has been doing a lot in automation for decades. You know, we have a very strong footprint in assurance and we have a good footprint in the orchestration business. What we've been doing now is bringing these two elements together. Why? Well, because having a complete life cycle, all the functions you need for the successful operations of 5G is actually going to be a differentiator for our CSPs. So I think analytics has to play a significant role and still very nascent because most of the AI ML is driven towards, um, say, vision or natural language processing, whereas network is a, is a different beast where, where you have high throughput and uh, low latency requirements. So I think AI ML techniques and models uh, will, will evolve to address uh, those um, high throughput requirements where we need to have millions of inferences per second. And that's quite different from what we see in uh, in consumer world, you know, where vision or language processing or other use cases. This is proven technology. It's running today. There are tens and tens and tens of vendors that have ported their network functions onto the cloud, operating tens and millions and 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 maybe even close to 100 million subscribers is running on that platform today. And and what we're doing is accelerating the hybrid aspect of that, so you can really go from the hybrid environment, from the on-prem environment, and, and, and migrate workloads into the cloud, maintaining uh, the same security posture and, and reliability posture as you would expect for telco-grade uh, solutions. And that's all for today's edition of The Slice. Please join us live again on Tuesday at 1 p.m. Central European time with another report from Barcelona with Ray and Yanni on day two of MWC. Until then, thanks for watching and goodbye.